Hi everybody, welcome back to HGTV Handmade. My name is Karen Cavett and today I am showing you guys all of my craft supplies and how I keep them organized. We have a lot to get to, so let's get started. Oh, but first, after you watch this video, make sure you head on over to my main channel because I also put up a full apartment tour video. So if you wanna see the rest of the place that I live in, make sure you watch that video after this one. All right, so first, let's take a look at the cabinet behind me. Now this apartment that I live in has basically no built-in storage, so I had to kind of create all of the storage myself. So this wardrobe behind me is from Wayfair. Originally it's meant to be like a clothing wardrobe, but I repurposed it into a craft supply wardrobe, and it was just the exact perfect size for the corner that I wanted to put it in. So then above that are some gray boxes that I got from Target, and I like these because they kind of blend into the gray wall color. They're pretty under stated. And in these is where I keep all of this seasonal decor. So I have a bigger box just for Christmas stuff out in the garage, but for like Halloween, Valentine's Day, Easter, I keep above the wardrobe since I only have to get them out once a year. Oh my gosh, I am not tall enough to do this shot. So okay, let's start on the top shelf of this wardrobe. So here I have some bright pink storage boxes which I got from Target like two years ago. So I'll get these down so that you guys can see exactly what's inside them. This one is kind of a miscellaneous box. There's not a whole lot in here. So great one to start the video off on. This one is where I keep all of my kind of like party and entertaining supplies. So like extra napkins, plastic cups. I have tons of plastic cutlery for some reason. Don't know why I have so much, but anything kind of related to that, like coasters and things, they all go in here. Up in this one are extra containers, so things to like hold other small objects that I'm not using at the time, just any anything extra like that goes in here. And then this one is probably my favorite, it's little Ziploc bags of just miscellaneous craft supplies, like rhinestones, feathers, pipe cleaners, balloons, little toys, I don't know, anything like that just goes into a bag and goes in here. Moving on to this side of the cabinet, as you can see, this is where I keep all of my duct tape. Um, since I made the videos for duct tape last year, they would send me tons of tape every month, and so that all ended up here. Here, and this is solid like there are columns of duct tape going all the way back like a foot and a half into this cabinet I have so much tape in this container is where I keep uh, my contact paper behind that is the iron and then the um, storage box for all the accessories that go with my drill. Moving on to this shelf, this is where I keep all of my extra printer paper, and it's also where I keep my photo paper and my nice like Epson matte paper. Pretty much any paper that I can print on is in this stack right here. Below that I have these, um, these little letters. Underneath that is another thing of paper and my triangle. And I have the whiteboards, which can be used in uh, collab videos. In front of that is my giant book of paint watches, which I picked up off the side of the road in San Francisco a few years ago. I have my 18 inch ruler, which is the one that I reach for the most. I have a Lazy Susan, so I can put crafts on here and then like spin them around for the camera. And then this is my pile of like stickers and stick on rhinestones and letter stickers and just anything like that can be stuck onto things. And then underneath that is the 3D Doodler, which I talked about over Christmas. I thought it would make a really good Christmas gift. Moving on to this shelf, um, I have this kind of organizer thing, and this is kind of a, kind of random what has been stuck in here. Um, I have a whole bunch of like rubber stamps and ink pads and charcoal, like leftover art school supplies that I don't really touch anymore. Above that is my map collection because you guys know how much I love me some road maps. And this little container is where I keep all of my extra command hooks and binder clips. And then these boxes behind that are probably my favorite part of the entire craft supply area. So let me get those out so you guys can see. So these are all of my little craft supply storage boxes and all of them have these little dividers so that you can make custom um, sizes of each of the boxes, which is perfect. And this is like the only way that I keep all of my little craft supplies organized is by using a whole bunch of these. So I have things like rhinestones divided up by color and I have beads and I have buttons and just any kind of little craft supply that needs a home. Along with the bigger storage boxes, I also have a couple of the smaller size of the storage boxes, which hold basically the same things, just 
smaller quantities or smaller items. So moving on down here to this shelf, this is the fabric shelf, and I don't really want to get everything out to show you because there's a lot of it and it's kind of hard to keep it all in here on a good day. And then moving on to this shelf down here, this is the paper shelf and I put it on the bottom shelf because paper can get really heavy really quickly. So over here I have these magazine holders which I bought on Amazon and they're 12 by 12 which means they can hold full-sized scrapbook paper. So in this one I keep all of my colored scrapbook paper and all the scraps of it and I don't know if you guys can really see but it's kind of in rainbow order. Next to that is another magazine holder and in this one I keep cards and envelopes and this book that I've been ripping apart for like 10 years now and just kind of some little scrapbook paper, some little random bits and bobs. Next to that are my pads of scrapbook paper. So I have this one, which you've probably seen some of those papers in some of my crafts, and I have this Christmas one. And so this is where I keep all the rest of my paper. So I have sandpaper, and then I've got a little bit more of this scrapbook paper, which actually these circles are from the very first HGTV handmade video. Who recognized them right away? Who is a super fan? So a lot of this is just kind of random. I have some um, like eight and a half by 11 scrapbook paper that I don't reach for quite as often. I have a bunch of pads of paper, which you saw in my paper 101 video on my main channel. I've got some kind of cheap construction paper that I don't really use. I don't know why I have it. Some museum boards, some chipboard, and then a whole bunch of tissue paper. And then finally, we've got one more shelf left in this wardrobe thing, and this is the tallest shelf. So this is where I put all of my tall things. So over here, we have some leftover craft foam from this. Snapchat video that you guys just saw a few days ago. I've got this extra like quilting piece for my sewing machine. I've got my folding board which is just a plastic board with grooves so that you can use a bone folder to make really precise folds. I've got some extra just brown paper. I've got this um this wreath thing that I started wrapping with string and never quite finished that DIY video. I've got this um this hook and yarn crocheting thing. And then I've got my light box, which I don't actually use very often, but when you do need it, like, you really need one, so it's just good to have on hand. Oh my god, I'm taking everything out, and now everything is falling over. Next to that, I've got a big piece of white museum board, some extras of the magazine holders, extra cutting boards, um, some extra large scrap paper, a thing of tabloid size, nice Epson paper. I've got more cutting mats. I just have way too many cutting mats and most of these are really gross by now. So next to that, rather than buying some fancy pants like wrapping paper storage system, this is just a trash can which we weren't using anymore so I decided it was the perfect size to hold some tall items. It kind of looks like a garden in here because I keep a lot of my extra fake flowers in here but I also have um, rolls of wrapping paper, I have my T-square, I have an extra curtain rod, and I've got my, oh this is stuck in here, but I've got my extra um, cutting, it's like a cutting thing and a ruler all in one, and if you watch my cutting tools video, you can see that, but I don't think I can get it out right now. So then next to the wardrobe, I actually keep some extra large cutting mats, foam core, a bulletin board, just kind of big, flat things like that, and that's the entire wardrobe. So that is about half of all of my craft supplies. Now we're gonna swing around to the other side of the room and this is the dining room table which is from Ikea and that's where I film all of my DIYs. Behind that is a tall shelf which is also from Ikea and then next to that are two kind of square cubby hole things and those are the Martha Stewart brand and I got them at Home Depot. And the gray boxes that are in those, I keep getting so many questions about where I got them. I just got those from Home Depot as well. Alright, so now I will show you guys what is on this tall shelf behind me. So starting at the bottom, we've got my color printer, which is the Epson Photo 1400. Moving up, we've got my paper shredder and my drill and my sewing machine. The shelf above that, it's all kinds of little pots of markers and paint brushes and pencils and sharpies. And a lot of these white pots are actually flower pots from Ikea that were like a dollar or two each. Moving up above that, we have these black and white containers and this is where I keep all of my scissors and all of my extra tools. So things like screwdrivers and my label maker and uh, like wire cutters. Moving up above that, I have my two Pantone boxes, which I am obsessed with. The pink one is actually empty, but the purple one is where I keep all of my basic craft supplies, like the stuff that I'm reaching for.
looking for for every single project. So that one actually is usually not on the shelf, it's usually on the table so that I can just grab all of the basic supplies out of there. Above that, on the very top shelves, I have my paper cutter and then I also have this Fiskars like pattern cutter thing that I never actually use, so I should probably just put that somewhere else, I don't know. And that's the entire shelf right here. These are things that I am okay having out on display because obviously the shelf does not have doors like the wardrobe does. So now moving on to what is on top of these little cubby holes here. I've got three glass jars full of my collection of washi tape with plenty of room to grow. Behind that is the ampersand coloring poster which I actually designed and I sell on DFTBA. Next to that is Bobble John as well as my HGTV home gnome. Next to that is something you might recognize from the how to get organized video. It is my wrapped up board games. On top of that is a little cactus that I have trouble keeping alive even though cactuses are supposed to be the easiest things ever. And I also have a pot of colored pencils. Above that is a cardboard ampersand which I made for a DIY video like two years ago. And then this copper shelf I actually got from Urban Outfitters on Black Friday. And then I recently acquired this little rabbit vase where you put flowers in its ears. I think it's the cutest thing ever. I have a little fake cactus from Wayfair and I have the shoes from my um, home decor video back in January. Above that is a clock from Society6 and then some bookends with a couple books in them. And I've been using these bookends actually in a lot of videos. I'm obsessed with them. I think they're so funny and they are from Wayfair as well. And finally the last part of this video is to show you what is in every single one of these cubby holes. So once again I'm starting with the kind of miscellaneous box and this one I've got a bucket of pencils that didn't fit on the other shelf. I've got an extra uh, power strip and I've got some extra like straws and coffee stirrers and things. This one is also unlabeled and is also just kind of miscellaneous. I've got some dry erase markers. I've got some just to random things that I should probably go through at some point. And then underneath that we have one that is, oh, completely empty. That's exciting. Okay, moving on to the actually organized ones. So here we've got the tape box and this is any kind of tape that is not duct tape because as you saw that was in the other wardrobe and it's not scotch tape because the scotch tape goes in the adhesives box. Underneath that is a box which has all of my extra felt as well as some extra canvases. And then underneath that is my sewing box. So this has the extra faux fur trim that I bought over Christmas. It has little tiny things of thread. I have the big thread for my sewing machine. I've got extra patterns from when I did that video with Simplicity. I've got a whole bunch of zippers and I have this cute little organizing thing for the bobbins for my sewing machine. Over here we've got the beads box and I actually, I don't know why this is in here, it is my heat gun which I haven't actually used yet but at some point I'll use that. And then in the beads box are obviously beads and I have them all sorted into Ziploc bags by color. So I have like white beads, we have yellow beads, we have pink beads, we have orange beads, every kind of bead you can imagine. This box is not very exciting. This is just where I keep my giant drop cloth for when I go outside and spray paint things. And then this is my wood crafts box. So this is any kind of like unfinished wood like spools and dowels and letters gravel pieces, little marbles, pretty much anything made of wood will go in here. Moving on to this box, we have got spray paint, which is pretty self-explanatory. Below that, we've got the actual like other kinds of paint. So we have um, like acrylic paint, um, watercolors, all of the paint pretty much that I bought for the recent Paint 101 video ended up in here. And there is a lot in here. This thing is actually really heavy. And then underneath that, it's kind of another miscellaneous, but it's also what I've called unfinished crafts. So um, actually these, this is kind of miscellaneous. This is just extra greenery that I got at the dollar store. And then I have things like headbands and extra flip flops, phone cases and light switch plates, just kind of plain bases that I could build a craft around if I wanted to. Oh, and this is also where I keep all of my paper lanterns, and I have a lot of them. Next up, we've got the box of paper punches, and I have a really good relationship with Fiskars, so a lot of these they have actually sent to me for free. And if you watch my cutting tools video, you can see um, pretty much all of these. Below that is the string box, and this is different from the ribbon box. I actually do keep ribbon scraps in here, but also things like yarn and wire, pretty much anything 
anything on a spool that is not ribbon. I have like twine, sequins, giant thing of chain, you know, stuff like that. Okay, this one might be my very favorite box. You guys know how much I love me some adhesives. So this is things like my hot glue gun, my Mod Podge, pretty much every type of glue that you can imagine, as well as scotch tape. We're almost done. Here we have got the ribbon box, which um, has ribbon in it. What a surprise. I cannot keep this thing clean to save my life. It is always so messy because I just have so many spools of ribbon that I actually don't use that often. But you know, once I have it, might as well keep it. Down here we've got the jewelry box, which is where I keep all of my jewelry making supplies. So if you guys know, I make those laser cut necklaces that I sell on DFTBA, and so I have like jump rings and chains. I've got my giant catalog, which looks like a phone book from the store that I order all of my jewelry making supplies from. And I keep examples and extras of all the products that I sell online in case I want to give them away in giveaways or just to, you know, have an example of. And then finally, the very last box. This is the glitter box. So this is where I keep all of my glitter very far away from all of my other craft supplies. And this is actually also where I keep my chalk paint from Debbie's Design Diary. She sent me a whole bunch from her chalk paint line and um, I keep all of those in here as well. Oh my gosh, that was so many craft supplies. I hope you guys like this tour. I know it was kind of a lot to go through. I basically live inside a craft store, but when you make DIY videos all the time, you kind of need that stuff on hand. So I would love to know in the comments, how do you store your craft supplies. Do you have any organizing tips or tricks that you want to share with us? So remember to head over to my main channel to see my full apartment tour if you want to see the rest of the apartment where I live. That video is up right now and I will put a link right down in the description. Be sure to press that like button and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody! Bye.